Well, a report last month predicted the Gulf Coast could lose most of the remaining deepwater drilling rigs unless the government picks up the pace on approving drilling applications. That is the focus of a meeting Congressman Jeff Landry and Senator David Vitter are holding with Michael Bromwich. Both men join us uh, this morning with more. Gentlemen, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Um, what is the purpose of this meeting today? Uh, to really, again, try to get Director Bromwich's attention about the drastic need to pick up the permitting process. Also, the leasing process, which is a whole new problem we're focused on. There have been zero new leases in the Gulf this year. That has plummeted lease revenue from about uh, $10 billion a few years ago to zero right now. So we need to pick up activity. It's important for the country economically, energy independence, also to uh, retire deficit and debt. This is a huge source of revenue to the federal government, second only to the federal income tax. The administration says it lifted that moratorium and put in place after the Deepwater uh, Horizon spill, yet you all are calling this a de facto moratorium that remains in place. Cor correct. One of the things that, that, that there's some sort of disconnect between what we hear in Washington in the Natural Resources Committee when Director Bromwich uh, and the administration come before us and then what I hear when I come back here in South Louisiana. And so, you know, that's what prompted this meeting. I, at, you know, at the end of the day, they say one thing in Washington and I come back here and people back here in Louisiana tell me another. I have a tendency to want to uh, listen to people uh, and believe people down here in Louisiana than in Washington. Especially when you don't see the activity going on. What sure. are they telling you? What do you see as a stumbling block? Well, I think it's their mindset more than anything. Clearly, after the Horizon incident, we have new requirements, we have new safety protocols, and everybody agrees that we needed to redo some things. But at the end of the day, that can't double the permitting process. That can't you know, slow to a trickle activity in the Gulf. It's too important for the country. And there needs to be a focus and a demand within the agency to get this going again. There isn't right now, as a result, we have at least 14 huge rigs that have left the Gulf for different parts of the world. And you've got some figures on, uh, on leasing. Yeah, leasing. just very quickly, this shows the plummet in revenue from all OCS production. Again, that's significant to the uh, nation for deficit and debt as well. This chart again shows plummeting in leases went from about $10 billion in revenue a few years ago to zero now. And this map shows where the rigs have gone, 14 leaving the Gulf, Brazil, West Africa, other parts of Africa, even one in Australia. And so this is exactly what we need to turn around before it's too late. When these huge rigs leave for other parts of the world, they're not turning around within a few weeks' time. What's the impact on jobs? What are the latest numbers? Well, well for every rig, every deepwater rig that leaves the Gulf of Mexico, 500 jobs leave with it. Um, <clears throat> so that we know that figure. We also know that we can create a quarter of a million jobs just by getting back uh, to Prima Condo permitting, uh, the permitting pace. Uh, and in, in the long term, we can create up to 1.2 million uh, jobs. I mean, think about this. At a time when our economy is faltering, a time when people uh, uh, are paying high energy prices, this is a way that America can do three things. They can create jobs, uh, we can get the economy rolling, and we can help uh, reduce the deficit. Meantime, the president is uh, sort of running a test vote today on his job stimulus program. I'm sure you all would contend that if they lifted these uh, restrictions, sure. they could sure. get some jobs uh, going here in Louisiana. What are your thoughts on the rest of his stimulus plan? Yeah, that's in the Senate. It requires 60 votes. I don't think it's going to get 60 votes uh, today. You know, the president and his liberal allies have been saying we want an up or down vote on just this package, no changes. So they're going to get that, and I think they're going to fail. I hope once that happens, they come with an open mind and start negotiating a bipartisan bill and a bipartisan approach. In my mind, that would include important things like domestic energy production. And Senator and, and Congressman, a lot of people, Americans are, are, are very dissatisfied with the way uh, neither of these parties seem to be working together. Right. What do you see as the big stumbling blocks to some real negotiation on, on a stimulus proposal that could possibly uh, boost the economy right. right now? Well, Rob, I think a lot of people are frustrated by gridlock and partisanship, but another part of it, which is legitimate, is two very different approaches to growing this economy, very different philosophies, and I think uh, we need to have that debate and have that discussion
with the American people. I mean, just just think about energy. I mean, what we talked about today, uh, we could put people to work, we could get the economy rolling at no cost to the taxpayer. You know, what a stimulus bill by simply just the administration allowing the permitting process, not only in the Gulf of Mexico, but in Alaska uh, and elsewhere in the country. Congressman Jeff Landry, Senator David Bitter, thank you very much. Best Thanks, of luck Robert. today in, in today's discussion. Thank you. Thank you.